will be uh, I've been taking um, uh, training sessions for these common written exams like CAS, MAT, PGCT and banking exams and I have 10 plus years of experience worked in several renowned institutions before I joined an academy and please subscribe to hashtag catch live daily yes guys got it please subscribe to cat hashtag catch live daily awesome so guys i hope by now you would have uh, added yourself in the an academy chat on telegram app if you have not please add yourself search for the cat channel and then we can have a chat and do group discussion in it right awesome guys so what you have to do you have to just take the cat subscription and uh, you know that um, uh, the subscriptions are very reasonable and uh, we get fetch you the best of education the best of training isn't it so for a month it's just 3500 for three months, it is two nine one seven. For six months, it's two triple three. Twelve months, it gets lesser and lesser. It's fourteen fifty eight. And twenty four months, it's just eight seventy five. Isn't it great? I feel so happy looking at the price that at this price, people are able to get the best of training for cat. Awesome. So guys, uh, what you have to do, you just have to take a CAT subscription and use my coupon code BYLIVE and apply and you get a 10% off immediately, instant 10% discount. Isn't it great? Awesome. Uh, so guys, uh, today we are going to do a verbal reasoning uh, session wherein I will be doing odd man out as well as analogies okay this is a uh, too important part of the cat paper so we can work on some really good i have tried i have chosen uh, uh, at least 30 very uh, uh, important questions for you uh, so, uh, but uh, guys one more thing before i start i don't want you to be in a hurry please go over the words one by one and I would really appreciate, guys, if you don't, uh, you know, uh, search for the meanings in your phone and try to be as honest as possible because this is a learning session, right? It is very easy to look up your phone, look up the meanings and answer. But I want you to promise me you're not going to do that. You are going to try and find out the meanings by yourself. So that... And Anyway, I am here. I will be there to help you. And this is not an exam. This is just a practice exercise for you. So I really would want you to be true to yourself and work accordingly. Okay, let me see who all have come. And, um, and let me wish all of them first before I go. So we have Chandan. Good evening, Chandan. Kirendra Singh. Hi. Good evening. Blue Flame Signs. Hi. Corona Ankush, good evening dear Gaurav, good evening, and good uh, Ankush, Ashish, good evening, and welcome to this awesome session, and we are going to have a great session, and you people really concentrate, take your time, we are not in a hurry, Saturday evening, chill guys, enjoy your session, okay, awesome. Now the first question comes up guys. So, I would really want you to concentrate only on the first one, okay? Understand each and every word and you have to pick up the odd man out here. Out of the four words, please pick up the odd man out. Who else do we have? Uh, okay, great, great. Uh, Nashima, hi, hi, good evening, Abhilasha, good evening, welcome to this awesome session. Yes, just work on the first uh, uh, set of words, guys, just the first set of the words. I 
don't want you to answer uh, Nikki. Please don't um, answer the second one now. Please concentrate only on the first one. Vamshika, hi dear. Hello, Sid. Hello. Anjali, hi dear. Prince Faraj, hello. Uh, Sanya, hello. Please concentrate only on the first set of words, the first four. No, you didn't miss anything. We just started, Sanya. You did not miss anything. You have to find the word which is odd. Uh, three words will be similar. One word will be different from the rest. So you have to find that word. I will give you the answer in some time. Uh, Narsimha Reddy, uh, when you ask me what is odd man out, uh, see suppose I will give you an example, okay. See uh, you have option choices like horse, goat, um, lion and flower. So which is the odd man here? Flower is the odd man, right? The other three are animals, right? So in the same way, there will be three words which will be same, okay? One word, the meaning will be different from the other. So you have to select that. Did you get it, Narsima? Hi, Tanvi Pandya. Welcome to this session. Hi, Prajwal. Hi, Kasturi Roy. Good evening. Correct, it is flower, isn't it? That is the odd man. I, that was just an example. Okay guys, shall we discuss the first one? Good. So guys, when we talk of consortium, consortium is an association. Association, that means a group of people. Guild is also a group of political parties. Okay? Um, hi, Bhavani. Uh, okay. And then when we talk about block, block is also an association. Here the odd man is dole out. What is the meaning of dole out? To give out money or food. Okay. Now do you understand? Do you understand which is the odd man now? D is the odd man out. Okay. Uh, welcome Narsima, you are most welcome. Uh, so those uh, guys who have um, got this right, uh, congratulations to all of you. Dole out means to give out money. Corona, Ankush, it means to give out money or to give out food. Okay? <laughs> yes, uh, I think the graphics team, uh, they have done a lovely job. Uh, see how well uh, they have portrayed it. It is really beautiful. Okay, guys. Now, if you are done with the first one, please proceed to the second one. Please take two, two minutes for each question. We are not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. Okay. Take two minutes. Think about this. Uh, each and every word, guys. And also... Um, Please, if you know any one of the root words which I have explained, please try and connect that root word to this and try and understand the meaning. Okay? Please work on the second one, please. Good evening, Saurabh Rao. Sia Bharti, hello. Okay. Um... Students are alway, already coming up with answers. Great. I'll stop.
still give you time. Uh, I want everyone to answer. There are 30 students who are here. I want all of you to understand and answer. Work on it. Think. Connect. Uh, if you know the root words, connect it to the words and find out the meaning. I hope none of you are looking up the meaning of the words. I want an answer for that. <laughs> Hi, Pachindranath. Hello. Good evening. Yes, uh, Ankush. Uh, you will be getting this type of questions in your verbal ability section. And tomorrow I am going to come up with a whole lot of uh, fill in the blanks, different types of fill in the blanks. That is also an exercise class. Uh, so be prepared. We are going to have a very interesting session tomorrow also. So we are coming up with some answers. I will just wait for one more minute and then we can discuss. Many of you have got it right. I'll just wait for one more, another 50 seconds before I give you the answer. Yes, Narsima Reddy. This uh, uh, odd man out depends a lot on your knowledge of words because uh, if you have a robust vocabulary, you will be easily able to answer this. Otherwise, uh, the words which you know I, I have given you as root words, you have to be very thorough with them just to uh, you know get a connect and understand the words. Okay guys, now we are going to discuss the second one. Munificent, munificent means generous. Okay, um, ambulant, ambulant. You remember guys, I have given you a word, circumambulant. Uh, or I have given you another word. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, what was that? Um, I have given you circumambulant and there was one more word which I had given you. Um, what was that word? Yeah, I, I, I just uh, remember and I will give you. Okay. See the next word, ambulate. Ambulate means to move about. Okay. Then you come to see copious. Copious means what does copious, copious means? Abundant. Copious means abundant. Uh, when the things are like, uh, you are having it in a uh, very big uh, quantity, very big amount. That is copious. And voluminous means a lot of fabric, cloth. You have material, no? Lots and lots of, lots and lots of uh, fabric. Okay. So if you look at a munificent, generous, it indicates something which is uh, generous, which is large hearted, right? Something big, right? Copious is also abundant, which is big. Voluminous, when I say um, meters and meters of fabric, that is also something big. So, what is the odd man out here? Ambulate. Ambulate means move about, which has got no connection with the other three words. Got it, guys? Uh, there was someone who said that I didn't understand. Sort of now. Are you able to understand now? No, Bhamshika, uh, this is wrong. Uh, am is definitely love. This is angle. The root word here is angle. A-N-B-U-L. Did you get 
get it? Okay. Now I would uh, any doubts about the second one, guys? Any doubts about the second one? Sort of now I wanted to an answer from you. Did you follow what has been told to you? Saurabh Rai, is it okay? Are you clear about it now? Nikti Sachin, even you didn't follow. See, just let me explain this again. Munificent means someone who has a large heart. The, you have to uh, notice something which is big and large. Okay? Now, if you look at copious, copious means abundant. Abundant means what? Endless, big. Okay, so that is uh, what is copious. Then you have voluminous. Voluminous means um, a large quantity of material, large quantity of uh, fabric. Now all these three, A, B and B, they are something to do with something big, something large. Okay, whereas if you are talking about B, ambulate, it is to move about. What connection does it have with big? No connection, right? So, amble is your answer. Got it, all of you? Neha Rai, hi. You just came in. I want an answer from the others. Did you understand what is being uh, actually explained here? Guys, stop answering for the third one now. Unless all of you understand the second one, I am not moving on to the third one now. Give me an answer, quick, quick, quick. Yes, guys. Kasturi Roy, you followed. What about uh, uh, this one? Someone else said, Nikki, did you follow? Uh, Ankush, this is not ambu. This root word is ambul. It is not a m. It is a m b u l. The word is ambul. A m b u l. Okay, great. I'm moving on to the third one. Now concentrate on the third one. See, the words are not very easy. Don't just guess. I would want you to understand each word and then select. Hi, Rajaran. Hello. Welcome to the session. Okay, you got it now, Ankush. Great, great. See the words. The third one is for loin, usurp, appropriate, and anodyne. Now, very carefully select the word which is the odd man out here. Ashish Chandman, you have to look at the words properly. That's not correct. Saurav Singh, hi. Every word is not giving you negative meaning. Just check, just check. No, no, no. Uh, not that way. You know, I, as I told you before also, uh, there are certain words in English wherein, you know, it has different shades of meaning. So, you have to consider that also. Just don't go 
but on the face of it there are other meanings to words also so be careful uh ashish um i'm not giving out the meaning now uh, just wait hang on for some time i will explain the entire all the words i have some uh, some more words coming in some more answers coming in okay hi dilip shwa hello welcome welcome to the session I think, and I don't want you to look up the meanings. Please don't look up the meanings. Yes. shall we discuss now dilip shwa okay dilip shwa says hello okay okay i am about to discuss this now the first word purloin purloin means to steal to uh, shoplift to pick up something uh, from the shop it is steal okay use up use up means to take over something again that is again connected to stealing and uh, taking over something okay then appropriate guys appropriate can be you know did you hear of this expression wherein you know he appropriated funds from the company that means he stole funds from the company okay so these three words are connected stealing taking over uh, misappropriation of funds okay these are uh, three three are connected whereas if you look at anodyne anodyne means something which is inoffensive that means it is not at all connected to crime or something bad it is inoffensive okay and it is bland bland you know what is the meaning of bland b l a n d bland okay so here your odd man will be anodyne anodyne is the odd man out clear guys run vijay hi run vijay hi welcome to the session anodyne is the correct answer so those who have chosen anodyne you are right okay guys i'm moving on to the next one great now look at the fourth set of words the fourth set of words you have abyss you have chasm you have abyss you have crater very good now it's clear now people are following good good kaushal kailash hello hello great now go on to the fourth one guys go on to the fourth one uh no this is not uh, live on an academy app this is live on youtube kaushal Ah, uh, Ashish, you have a question, right? Ah, uh, yeah, purloin and user both mean similar to steal. Okay, and appropriate shows suitable. Ah, uh, see, ah, uh, if you look at those words, 
one pill. Uh, okay, take it this way. Uh, appropriate is somewhat connected to this. Okay, like in the way, uh, as I gave you that example, right? Um, appropriate, what did I tell you? What is it? It can be connected as an antonym too. If you take it, it can be con connected as an antonym too. But if you take anodyne, anodyne has no connection with these three words at all. Caution, I teach verbal ability and reading comprehension. That's it. Okay, guys. Now concentrate on the fourth uh, set of words. The fourth set of words. Abbey, chasm, abyss, and crater. Please concentrate on this. There is, I told you, Vamshika, not all words have uh, root words, right? Please think and then answer. Some of you are coming up with the right answer. I can see. Yeah, Ashish, that is why uh, they give such words to confuse you. And you have to be smarter than that. Right? They will definitely give you uh, words which are very closely related so that you get confused, but you should not. Hi, Mohamed. Hello, good evening. Okay, guys, can we discuss uh, the fourth one? Okay, uh, A, Abbey means a monastery. Okay, it is a monastery. If you look at chasm, chasm is a breach or a rift. It is rift, division, breach. That is the meaning of chasm. Okay. Even if you look at abyss, abyss also means the same. They are synonyms. Chasm and abyss, they are synonyms. Even abyss means breach, rift, division. And then you come to crater. Crater, you know, uh, guys, you can connect it to a volcano, right? And volcano, when the volcano erupts, what happens? There is a rift, there is a division. So again, these three words, B, C and D are connected. Okay? Whereas A, Abbey, which is a monastery, that is the odd man out. Great. Most of you have got it correct. Mohammed, uh, you say Abhi, Niti, yes. Utkash, we will discuss about the number of questions later on. First, you just uh, concentrate on this. Okay? Great, all of you got it? Move on to the fifth one. Quickly, quickly. I want all of you to answer all the questions today. I want, Because it's an important part of uh, verbal ability and I don't want you to miss. Quickly go through the uh, fifth set of words. Hi, Nitesh. Welcome to the session. Quickly, quickly concentrate. You are, we are doing odd man out. So, we are uh, in the fifth set of words. Please look at all the words and tell me which one is the odd man here. Wait, Abhilash, I will give you the answer in some time.
Yes, I want more answers coming in. Good, good. Dave, please go through the words again. Dave, go through the words again. Marine, oh Marine, hi. You are here. Great. I've seen you in the special class, isn't it? One more minute before we move on to the next one. Okay, uh, most of you have got it right, guys. So, if you see the first word, plummet, plummet means to collapse. Okay, actually, plummet, plunge, and sink all of them means to collapse. A, B, and D they are all connected, all means to collapse. Okay. Whereas, if you see plume, plume means to flutter, to boast. Okay? So, plume is the odd man out here. Plume is the odd man out here. Guys, is it clear? Uh, Nitish, 10th May. Uh, Four ions you should have at least a minimum 80 to 85 percent marks. Okay. See Nitish, if you do, if you get a good percentile in CAT, then the 10 class marks won't matter so much. Though they do consider the 10 class marks, but if you are extreme, if your performance is extremely good in CAT, then you can overbit all that. So, uh, uh, 10 standard marks, uh, maybe about. Uh, Two to three percent they'll consider. Otherwise, if you have a good percentile in cat, you should be able to crack it. No problem. Okay. Did you all move on to the sixth one, guys? Quickly, quickly, quickly see the sixth uh, one. Turtle, coagulate, flout and clout. Vamshika, 12th class. Also, don't worry too much about 12th class. They, 10th class is still more important than 12th. So, just concentrate on cat here. Yeah, don't worry about... Uh, it does matter, Kaushal. Uh, 10th and 12th class max uh, does matter. They do consider. But uh, that comes later on. You know, when they are trying to filter out, that time they take that into consideration. Otherwise... Your cat uh, percentile is the most important. Okay, uh, great. Uh, so, I am going to discuss uh, the sixth one now. So, curdle. Curdle, you know, um, if you add lemon to the milk, what happens? It curdles now. Hindi mein kya bolta hai? jata hai, right? Curdle phat jata hai, dood phat jati hai, that is curdle, okay? So, curdle, coagulate and clot, they all mean the same. Clout is different. Can you tell me what is the meaning of clout? Clout means a heavy blow, a heavy blow with the hand. Gusa, gusa bolte, clout is a heavy blow with the hand. That is a punch, a gusa. That is what is clout. So now you know what is the difference. Curdle, coagulate and clout. They are the, the meanings are the same. Clout is the odd man out. Uh, 
Ankush, it's okay. Concentrate on catch now. Whatever has happened has happened. Now they have come up with several other throw courses. You have 20 irons now. So the chances of getting admission in any one of the irons is much more uh, higher nowadays. So don't worry about that. Yes, Ashish, it is a punch. Okay, uh, can we move on to the next slide now? Okay, guys, concentrate on the seventh one now, quickly. Concentrate on the seventh set of words. You have fetish, you have phobia, you have mania, and you have moribund. Now, in this, I have discussed uh, two words already. So, I hope all of you get it right. I have discussed two words already here. Ashish Raj, yes, uh, but one thing you must remember that I am is a IIM. You know, a college will not get the tag of an IIM if it is not good. Okay, so uh, if you have to have that name IIM, yes, the top eights are definitely good, but that IIM, uh, the tag, it matters a lot. So keep that in mind. Prince, you can give me only one answer. You can't give me choices. Quickly, quickly, think about it and answer. I have given you two root words here. We have discussed it. I don't want you to get it wrong. Vamshika, you say A. Just look, look. Matrista, hi, you joined in. Just go through the words, guys, before you come to a conclusion. Abhilasha, you are good, doing good today. I am happy. Blue flame signs, yo. Dev Gupta. Great, great guys. Okay guys, uh, shall we discuss or do you want some more time? Uh, Pratap, no dear. You are right, Blue Flame. Okay, just let me discuss. So guys, if you see fetish, fetish means you a strong liking for something. You know, it, it is not a normal liking, a very strong liking. That is fetish. Now, phobia, I told you, is a fear of something. Like we discussed about claustrophobia. Did we discuss the other day when we were doing root words? Yeah? Then mania, mania is also a bipolar uh, disorder. Like some people have this mania, no? To keep washing hands every two minutes, right? That is a mania. So if you see all the first three words, A, B and C, they are some kind of a disorder. Okay, the first one, you know, uh, see, you, sh you can have a liking for something. But when it goes uh, to a superlative degree, that is not good. Right. So, fetish, phobia and mania, they are disorders of some kind. Whereas, moribund, moribund is from the root word M-O-R or M-O-R-T, remember? Which means dying. So, moribund is dying or declining. So, here, 
your odd man out is G. Moribund is the right answer. Ashish, what is the confusion now? Blue flame, okay, your name is Pratyusha. You are one and then uh, uh, Corona COVID. Corona COVID is Ankush. I keep getting uh, confused, you know. Why can't you, uh, you know, uh, give your uh, names only? Why all this blue flame signs and all? <laughs> you have a lovely name. Uh, Ashish, what is your problem? Tell me. See, when we talk about fetish, phobia and mania, they are not normal. They are some kind of a disorder in us. Okay. Whereas, if we are talking about moribund, moribund is like dying or declining in health. So, what connection does that have with fetish, phobia and mania? Tell me. So, your uh, odd man should be moribund. Okay, you want me to set a timer and how much time uh, should I keep? Tell me. Give me a suggestion. Niti Sachin, fetish means strong liking for something. Niti. Sean, hi. Hi, Sean. Welcome to the session. Okay. Got it. Let's move on to the next one, guys. The eighth one. Ruminate, chew, ponder, and beggar. What is your answer? Quickly. Think and then answer. We are not in a hurry. Think, Swaraj, you want two minutes? Okay, done. Wait, uh, I will set a timer. Achha, one says one minute, one says two minutes, one says 90 seconds. Now what should I go for? Tell me. I give you one and a half minute. I give you one and a half minute. The time starts now. I am uh, I have started a stopwatch now. One and a half minute guys. Many of you have got it right, but still I would like to explain. I'll wait for one and a half minutes. One is saying 50 seconds, Shivendra Singh. The others wouldn't agree to you, Shivendra. Okay, I'll give you 90 seconds. That would be better. 90, okay? Yeah, yeah, 90 seconds. Okay, done. Dev Gupta, 90 seconds done. Okay, guys. I'm about to discuss now. Now, ruminate. What does ruminate mean? Guys, you have seen the cow when it is just sitting. You see it chewing? That is called rumination. Chewing the cud, they say. Okay? Ruminate also means, a secondary meaning of ruminate means to think deeply. Deep thinking. Okay? Now, the second one is chew. Again, ruminate and chew. Easily you are able to connect. Then when you are talking about ponder, ponder is again to think. Okay, ponder is again to think. So, even if you take this word chew, you know what you say? That okay, when I'm sitting uh, idle, I will look back, I will think deeply. So, I can chew. That also is a word which is used. So, here if you see, a uh, ruminate, chew and ponder, they are all connected. Whereas, wagger, wagger means to gamble. Wagger is to gamble and it has got no connection with the 
first three words. Oh, doesn't matter, blue flame science. I'm sorry, Rakusha. Doesn't matter, no problem. Okay, guys, is it clear? Why green is the answer? Quickly give me an answer, then we'll move on to the next one. Move on to the ninth one. I'm starting the stopwatch now. 90 seconds you have. Work on the ninth set of words. Fifty seconds to go. Done, guys. Yeah, what is the answer guys? Uh, Ashi says uh, circumvent, Abhilasha says uh, circumvent, uh, don't chew my mind, <laughs> yeah, 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 Raj Aryan says squat, uh, Shivendra says squat, any other answers guys? Prince Varad says D, okay. Anjali says C. Ninth one is difficult. Okay, guys, I'm discussing it now. Now, circumvent, guys, I have given you the meaning of circumvent. Circumvent is from the root word circum, which means around, right? So, circumvent means to avoid, okay? It can be to avoid, it can mean to prevent. Thwart is also to prevent. Foil is also to prevent. So, circumvent, thwart and foil. All of them means to prevent. Whereas, when you talk of foist, foist means to force. To force or to impose. Did you get it guys? Is it clear? So, your odd man here is D. D is Foist. Foist is your odd man out here. Clear? Fine. We'll move on to the next one. Guys, quickly you do this because I have the analogies to discuss too. Yeah, Niti Sachin. Foist is the right answer. Quickly go through the 10th one. 10th one is an easy one. I'll give you 60 seconds for this. Guys, time up. A. Uh, Ashish says A. A, I thought this was easy, yeah? Okay, guys, I'll discuss this, okay? Now, if you see limousine is a car, sedan is a car, okay? 
hatchback is also a sports car so c is the correct answer i think shivendra has uh, shivendra has got the answer but you, the spelling is wrong shivendra so uh, c is the correct answer because concord is a type of aeroplane yeah uh, saurav rao correct concord is a type of aeroplane concord whereas limousine sedan and hatchback they are all cars types of cars Okay, great. Move on to the eleventh one quickly. Ashish, you can't give me choices. Only one choice. That's it. Ashish, all of them, limousine, sedan, and hatchback, they are all types of cars. So, Concorde is an aeroplane. So, that's how that becomes an odd man out. Okay, guys, you're done. Fine. Now, I'm going to discuss this. First one is Pierce. Pierce means what? See, with the needle you pierce, no, it penetrates through a cloth or a flower, right? So, that is pierce, penetrating into something. What is presse? Presse writing, don't you have in English presse writing? That is making a summary, okay? Whereas, bowdlerize, what is bowdlerize? It is sensor, C-E-N-S-O-R, sensor. Now, what does a sensor do? It cuts short the film, right? It uh, cuts certain parts of the film, right? So, if you see, press A also, you cut short and write. Bodler rice is also sensor, wherein they cut short. Sensor also cut short. So, here B, C and D are all connected. A is your odd man out because penetration into something is entirely different from cutting short. So here 11th one, A is your answer. Correct, uh, Vamshika, C is the answer, correct. Sorry, C is not the answer, I'm sorry, Vamshika, A is the answer. Pratyusha, you are right. Vamshika, what is the hole? There is no hole here. Here says, Needle, near, needle pierces through a cloth or anything, right? So, pierce is your answer. Go on to the twelfth one quickly. I am uh, starting the watch now. I will give you 60, minute, 60 seconds. Come on quickly. Go through the words, the twelfth one. I like it, Niti, Abhilash, ah, Niti. Good, good, good going. 
Raj Aryan. Yes, good. I like the explanation, Niti. Oh, all of you have got it right. Great, great. So the time is up. So guys, if you are talking about cymbal, harp and bongo, they are all musical instruments. Whereas bonito, bonito means something which is beautiful and pretty. It is a Spanish word. It is a Spanish word. C is the right answer. Yes, Pratyusha, you are right. C is the right answer. Bonito is a Spanish word which means beautiful or pretty. Got it? Great. The last three, quickly, quickly. See the 13th one. You have leotard, you have boots, you have galoshes and you have wellingtons. Can you tell me what is, which one is the odd man here? Your time starts now. Shivendra Singh, you like my teaching style. Thank you so much. Twenty seconds to go, guys. Come on, quickly. Thirteenth one. Dev Gupta, you say C. No. Pushy girl. Hi, Kushi. Dipanjan, uh, you are saying C. No, Dipanjan. Kasturi Roy says yes, A. Yeah, Niti, you are right. Uh, correct. Okay, guys. Now I am going to discuss this. So, when we talk about leotard, leotard is a, um, is a garment which sticks to your body. Usually you wear it when you do workout, okay? That is a leotard, especially if you see people uh, doing um, uh, these uh, gymnastics and all, they have that uh, stretchable, uh, the, the um, uh, attire they wear is of that stretchable uh, fabric, right? It sticks to their body. It is usually used for uh, workout. Now, if you see B is boots, galishes and wellingtons are also types of boots. So B, C and D, they are all boots, whereas leotard is a garment. Got it? Guys, is it clear? Kumar Manish, hi. Hello, Binoy. Hello. Okay. Quickly go on to the 14th one, guys. Quickly. I am starting the watch now. Quickly go through the 14th one. Uh, Pina Hira, we will take a, uh, we will take a uh, class on adjective, but uh, we have finished verbs 1, verbs 2. Yeah, next class will be adjective. Mostly I will be doing adjective on Monday. Abhilasha, super. Niti, good, good, great, yeah. Uh, Ankush, yes, great. Okay, great. I'm discussing the answer now. Guys, barrister, attorney and advocate are all lawyers. Okay, whereas juror is a member of a jury. You have jury, right? So, juror is a member of the jury, 
whereas barrister attorney and advocate they are all lawyers okay uh dev gupta see she is also connected to uh, the court but she is different because he, uh, the reference is to the member of the jury people who make decisions people uh, 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 jury is the judges uh, collection of judges so whereas barrister attorney and advocate they are all lawyers Uh, are raj are in the same timing from 8 to 9:30 that's my time okay now quickly go on to the 15th one guys quickly quickly i want to discuss some analogies today this is the last of odd man quickly discuss quickly Yes, Riti, if you are late, we are almost done with odd man out. Abhilasha, please go through the words again. Dev Gupta, good. Anjali, please go through the words again. Difference is there in their post. Saurabh, no. Saurabh Rao, yes, good. Okay, guys, I'm discussing. So, miscreant. Who is a miscreant? Miscreant is a uh, offender or a culprit. Defendant means the accused, a person who is accused of a crime. She is again accused. Okay. Whereas when we talk of plaintiff, plaintiff means a person who initiates a, a lawsuit in the court. So A, B, C are all to do with accused and D is the correct answer. D is the odd man out, a person who initiates a lawsuit in the court. That's your answer. D is the answer. Great going guys. So we are done with the odd man. Now we will go to analogies. Uh, so look at the, the example given here. It's so beautiful. Uh, it says, "Boy is to girl as man is to woman." Okay. Now that's a very sweet way of introducing analogies. But here, you know, analogies are. Um, here we talk about relationship just for the uh, sake of explanation. Okay, uh, it is just for the sake of explanation. Now, see, in this question, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to identify and assess the logical relationship between a given pair of words. Okay, guys. So uh, that you have to do. You have to assess the logical relationship. The next one is you must then choose a pair of words from the options. given the same logical relationship as the original pair as the first pair you have to select the same uh, a pair which has the same logical relationship then the third one is these questions they test not only your vocabulary skills but also your ability to identify the relationship between words okay so you see how important it is now guys just to give you uh, some examples see uh, you can have a synonymous and antonymous relationship sometimes you will have two synonyms sometimes uh, the first two words will be antonym or sometimes you will have a um, degree uh, like you can talk about degrees like mist to fog mist is a light fog right a denser form of mist would be fog that is another relationship then we can talk about part to whole for example uh, hand is hold right whereas finger 
is a part of the hand. Right? Like that's why we talk about part to whole. Then we can talk about tool and worker. For example, a, a pen to a writer. Did you get it? So these are all relationships which we, which they talk in analogy, analogies. Then you have action to object. For example, the pilot flies an aeroplane, right? So, which is the object? Aeroplane and what is the action? Flying, right? That is another relationship. Then you can also have item and purpose. For example, you have the item knife and what is the purpose of it? Cut. So, these are some of the relationships. These are only few of the relationships, guys. There are many other relationships also. So let's just get started. Okay. Now guys, this is for an example. Okay. Just let me give you an example of this. Now, artist painting. Okay. What is the uh, relationship here? An artist. What? What is the relationship? Artist and painting. Artist. Creates painting. This is an example. I am explaining it guys. Uh, you don't have to do it yourself. I am going to help you out in this. So artist creates painting. Right. Whereas if you look at the first one. Driver drives the car. Now again that is not connected. Let's look at composer. Now composer creates symphony. That is the answer. Now look at C. Surgeon performs operation. Again, it has got nothing to do with creation. Then novel writes is written by an author. So, which is the logical relationship here? The logical relationship will be composer creates symphony as artist creates painting. Did you follow? No, no, not novel and author. Guys, I explained it. Now, did you follow? See, an artist creates a painting. In the same way, composer creates symphony. Driver drives a car. Surgeon performs an operation. Novel is written by an author. Where is the creation here? Did you get it, guys? Your answer should be composer and symphony. Did you follow? I want an answer before we move on to the next one. Yes, Niti, that is the answer. Composer and symphony. Clear guys, any doubts? Please give me an answer and then I will move on to the next one. blindly choose a relationship here. Please understand the relationship of the original pair. The pair which is given on top. After analyzing that only then you select. Okay. Fine. Let's go on to the next one. Look at this guys. Racket and tennis. This is a tricky one. Don't be in a hurry to answer. Don't be in a hurry to answer. It is a tricky one. I am telling you at the outset. Yeah, um, Ankosh Raj, good, good. Yeah. 
guys i will discuss this okay how should you take it see if you take it as racket is used to play tennis then you will go wrong because all of them will be the same ball is used for for football glove is used for cricket board is used for chess bat is used for cricket you will not be able to differentiate how are you going to establish the relationship now if you take it as racket is used to strike a ball okay now tell me if i use this analogy racket is used to strike a ball which one should be your answer now yes most of you have given me this answer d bat is used to strike a ball isn't it did you follow guys bat is used to strike a ball as racket is used to strike a ball got it all of you yes vamshika you are right saurav uh, sudeep shrishti all of you are right uh, prince faraj abhilasha yes all of you are right great we are moving on to the next one now look at this arbitrator and judge please understand who is an arbitrator so arbitrator is a person who uh, judges a particular situation when there is a dispute an arbitrator judges a situation right now you look at the um options and tell me awesome ankush i'm very happy with you today Shivendra, go through the words very, very careful. Here, you need to be very careful. Okay, guys, I will discuss. Now, what did I tell you? An arbitrator judges or decides when there is a dispute, right? Now, if you look at a option A, mechanic, mechanic sees a problem and repairs it. As arbitrator, arbitrator sees a problem and solves it, right? So your answer should be A. Now there is no connection. The direction and orient is absolutely irrelevant. Lawyer and legislate, but see the primary function of the lawyer is not legislate, not to legislate. Okay, so that's why C goes up, and musician and orchestra also is irrelevant here. irrelevant here so your answer should be a mechanic and repair yes all of you did you get it uh, did you understand guys any doubt <coughs> great great good going awesome awesome let's go on to the third one now look at this capricious and fixed i will not give you the meaning okay you have to understand and only then we will do great sai Sai Pratyusha got it. Great, great, great. 
What, uh, Ankush, what is no? You got the answer, no. Then what is the problem? Why not B? Hey, how can it be B? Huh? Musician and orchestra, what is it? What is the connection here? What did I say? An arbitrator? An arbitrator judges a situation and solves the problem, right? In the same way, mechanic also sees a problem and repairs it. Now, musician, where is the problem and uh, where is the uh, uh, orchestra there? What is the connection there? There is no connection at all. Okay. Go up to the third one. Quickly, quickly. Okay guys, answer, answer quickly. So I have Sai uh, Pratyusha who says B and then Pika uh, says C, Corona says A. No guess ma'am, no, 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 no guessing. Abhilasha says D. So guys, uh, shall we discuss it? Biased and judgmental, no. Okay, let me give you this. Uh, guys, capricious means fickle-minded. A person who is uh, uh, very undecided about everything, right? Now, here you see it is antonym. The one is very undecided, the other one is fixed. So you have to look for an antonym. And what is the antonym here? Fickle and decisive. C is the answer. C is the answer. Because laughter and joy is the same. Agitated and uneasy. Again, both are negative. Biased and judgmental both mean the same. We are looking for an antonym here. So, fickle-minded, a person who is not able to make a decision, that is one. And decisive is a person who is able to take decisions, right? So, your answer should be C. Srishti was right. Srishti, you are right, my dear. Others got it wrong. C is, yeah, uh, yeah Ankush. Srishti got it right. Great, great, very good. You have to understand the relationship in the first pair. If you understand in the main pair, the relationship, if you are able to understand, you will be able to get it easily. Okay, let's go to the fourth one. Now, cacophonous. Cacophonous and harmonious. First, understand what is the relationship between them. Only then go to the option. Cacophonous and harmonious. Yes, Abhilasha, you are right. Now choose the correct answer. Dev Gupta says A. Anjali says B. Niti says no idea. Come on, Niti. They are antonyms, yes. The first pair, it, they are antonyms. Cacophonous means 
very harsh loud sound harmonious means melodious so they are opposite you have to choose a um, uh, an option which is opposite which is an antonymous relationship now tell me which is the answer correct a is the answer bellicose means a person who is willing to fight whereas pacific means peaceful right so a is your answer if you look at b uh, b option b beauty and peace there is no connection at all tempestuous and stormy both are synonyms Bo both means stormy considerate and sympathetic again there, there is no relationship here the, uh, the person who is considerate can be sympathetic right this does not indicate a antonymous relationship so the first one is correct bellicose which means quarrelsome fighter call and the opposite would be peaceful calm right got it dev gupta great great fine we will go on to the next one we have a uh, little time i want to do as many uh, possible now look at this saturated wet what is the relationship here first understand this first understand the relationship between saturated and wet Great, Saurav, you are able to understand. Great, Arad, Arjun, what is the problem? Are you not able to follow what we are doing? Awesome, Nithi. Hats off to you. Great, great. They are not antonyms, Dev Gupta. They are not antonyms. They are actually, uh, you know, guys. Saturated means wet, right? Now take this relationship. Saturated means wet. Now can you find an answer? Saturated means wet. Now find an answer. Which one? Give me the option number. Yes, Sumit Shukla, you are right. Arid means dry. Arid means dry. D is the right answer. Now, if you see option A, acrid. Acrid is pungent, acidic. Again, there is no relationship here. Distance and far away both means they are synonyms here. Damp and drenched. Damp is different. Damp means wet, whereas drenched means when you are wet. It is not that you are saturated. It means that you are wet. Okay. So your option D is right. Arid means dry. As saturated means wet. Arid means dry. Got it? Let's go to the next one. See kangaroo and joey. Understand the relationship between them. We have the answers coming in. Vikas says B. Okay. Saurav, no, my dear. Ankur says B. Good. Dev Gupta, no. Yes, Vikas, correct. Vamshika, D, no. I, I was sure that someone will get confused here. I was very sure. Yes, so let's discuss guys. 
this kangaroo the young one of a kangaroo is a joey okay the young one of a kangaroo is joey now if you are looking at option 1 lion and pride lion pride is a collection of lions collective noun you call it a pride of lions nothing to do with younger one of a lion right a younger one of a lion is called what cub right next one goose and gosling is the right answer uh, the younger one of a goose is called a gosling right baby of beauty is again collective noun okay as we spoke about pride of lion better we have baby of beauties okay now let's go to d see guys if horse was first and pole was given later then it would have been a correct answer but here what is it saying the younger one of a pole is horse which is wrong right but you see option b is right the younger one of a goose is called a gosling correct neeti sachin you are right yes did you follow guys guys another two minutes one more question we will do quickly now look at this merciless and sympathy what is the relationship they are antonyms a person who is merciless is very harsh and cruel whereas a person who is sympathetic he is uh, he or she is full of compassion right so these are antonyms opposites So, uh, Dave says it is C. Uh, no, guys, that is not right. Sai Pratyusha, please go through it again. We have another C forum, right? No. Very good, Niti Sachin. Awesome, I'm amazing, amazing. Great. So, guys, uh, look at option D. See, merciless and sympathy, they are antonyms. Then if you look at Frank, a person who is outspoken and reticent, we have discussed it in our root words class. Reticent means reserved. So Frank and reticent, they are antonyms. Yeah, Abhilasha Rajput, D is the right answer. Now if you look at option A, needless and intelligence, they don't have, they don't have a relationship here. Belligerent and detachment also no relationship. Pathetic. And pity also no relationship. Your answer D is correct. Frank and reticent. Okay, guys. Guys, we this has to be the last uh, uh, question of the day. Though I had 15 questions for you. But nevertheless, uh, we are going to take it up uh, sometime later. So, I hope you have followed these uh, two odd men out and uh, analogies form a very important part of your verbal ability section. So I don't want you to ignore. We have to, you know, get as many marks as possible gathered, no, for CAT. So I'm trying to prepare you on the same lines. Uh, did you find this session helpful, guys? Did you find this session helpful? Thank you, Niti. Bye-bye. You too. Take care. And awesome. So uh, we will discuss all these later. Uh, so guys, again, the Telegram app. Some of you said that uh, you were happy to receive the notes on Telegram app. Awesome. Yeah. Bye guys. Thank you very much. Please share the video. Please like and share the video. And also put an alarm for 8 o'clock tomorrow evening. We are going to meet at the same time. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, please take the Anacademy subscription, guys. It is
is going to be really helpful. You will have live classes. You can interact with the educator. You will have leaderboards, live polls. Uh, you know wherein you know uh, you can get the answer immediately. And then in addition to that, you will have test series and the analysis of the test series. And then you have live doubt clearing sessions too. So multi-fold advantage for by taking an Unacademy subscription. Please do it. Okay, then what do you have to do for the subscription? Just go to Play Store and download the Unacademy learning app and install. It is just so simple. Very, very simple guys. And then what you have to look for? You have to look for the plus course. And your goal would be CAT because you are going to write the CAT exam. And what do you have here? You can have 30 plus hours of sessions every day. Structured courses in English and Hindi. You will have you will have access to 14 plus top educators and new courses published every month. So you see the advantage. Okay. So please get your subscriptions today. Okay, then for you, you see the subscriptions are at a very reasonable price. So for one month, it is just 3,500. For three months, it is 2,917. Six months, it is 2,333. And 12 months, 1,458. And it gets cheaper for 24 months. That is 875. You just have to use my coupon code BYLIVE and you get a 10% off. Instantly. Great guys. Awesome. It is awesome. So it's not only CAT. You have NEET, JE, 9, 10, 11, 12. And the list is endless. Endless guys. Uh, then please, please, it's a request. Please like and share the video as much as possible guys. And subscribe to hashtag CAT Live Daily. As I told you, put an alarm for 8 o'clock in the evening so that you don't miss the session and sharp at 8, you meet me every day and we will learn a whole lot of things, right? So please subscribe to hashtag Cats Live Daily, okay? And you use the referral code BYLIVE and you get a discount of 10% immediately. Okay, guys, have a great weekend. Good night. Thank you for attending my session. Bye-bye.